a pillar of Como and the community for more than four decades. With that signature smile, he's the forecaster everyone knows by name. Steve Poole is synonymous with Como 4 News. I feel like Steve just is Como. Tonight, we look back on Steve Poole's remarkable career as he retires from Como News. I think of Steve and uh, how much he gave to Como. We celebrate his legacy, his passion, <laughs> his humor, and his commitment to Western Washington. In a special Como presentation, we celebrate the one and only Steve Poole. A career, especially a truly great career, is a journey. And this man's very public journey into your living room was set into motion long before the man even knew enough to dream. I had a very good teacher when I was a junior in high school, and she got me interested in debate. And I didn't even know what the heck it was. But she said, come on in here, you can learn about this. And I walked in there, and these people were, you know, they're making a point, and they're, you know, they're just beautifully speaking and I thought wow that's cool and it didn't have anything to do with TV it was just um, how eloquent are you can you make an argument can you take a bunch of information and drill it down to where an average person can understand what the heck they're talking about the journey begins with an arrival at Como Television it was 1974 Steve Poole was still in college it was kind of serendipity it just happened to be from somebody that my mom knew and put me on that. It was this program called Action Inner, Inner City. And uh, I got a chance to interview people. And it, it wasn't something that, I think they put it on like at 3.30 in the morning or something, you know. <laughs> Today's show is about a remarkable documentary on blacks in the Northwest. It aired on Como, but it wasn't produced by Como. Someone in the building, though, thought he had potential. And so they hired him on at Como as a trainee. I, at, the fr at first, really couldn't believe it. You know, I'm a little black kid from South Seattle, you know. Head looked like a milk dud. <laughs> I mean, I, I was not. You I can't was, say that. <laughs> maybe you may cut that out. But I'll put oh, it I'm this not way. cutting anything. <laughs> well, let's just say I wasn't a matinee idol. <laughs> I didn't even think. Of, first of all, I thought I was too ugly. <laughs> to still, be on TV. It's still debatable. Well I, <laughs> well, I changed a little bit. This is all real now, man. There ain't no plastic in here. I know people say, God, you never you never age. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be back with more of Window in just a moment. He worked on a show called Window. He did some news reporting. He was the weekend sports guy for a time. UCLA Bruins won the Pac-10 track and field title today at Husky Stadium. There was something there all right, a skill set. He had a way about him. It was just a matter of him finding a fit, and then the fit found him. Here you are, right in this area, and there's one little rascal here. It was at the time when Ray Ramsey was about to retire. They hadn't found anybody else to do it, and I think it really was a case where they said, uh, I had pool do it for a couple days <laughs> while we're looking around, you know. And I got up there and I did. I said, God, this was kind of, this was kind of cool. And here is a young gentleman to watch. That Steve, because he's, uh, he's, he's, he's marvelous. He went back to school, a crash course in weather from UW climate guru Cliff Mass. I mean, he picked up weather, you know, based several years of meteorology very, very quickly. Well, obviously it worked because he liked it and it liked him and the rest, like they say, is history. And so he became a weatherman, Como's weatherman. Let's talk about our situation because I know you want to know, you're saying, Steve, come on, what's going to happen now? He continually added to his workload. He hosted an award-winning show called Front Runners. Hello, everybody. I'm Steve Poole, and welcome to Front Runners. And a show called Summer Break. I'm Steve Poole, your host. Tonight, we're going to introduce you to a phenomenon called breakdancing. 
And so the journey took on a direction, and the man laid claim to his place, a place on a news set, and in our homes, and in our hearts. And he held on to that place for a long, long time. This is very deceptive weather. This happens, you know, and folks will see some of that sunshine and think, hey, everything's okay. No, it doesn't work that way. We have a snow advisory up at this time, and what that means is that we do expect accumulations of snow for just about... This is the culprit right here, low pressure. Now, when the storm was at its most intense, let's and we can kind of see this on a satellite image here. That was the thing I liked the most, was to be able to take all that disparate information and know that you're getting through to people so they can make a decision about their lives. That's what got me. That's what really got me. You look further out to sea and you see the clouds developing a bit more, getting a bit more intensity to them. Well, that intensity is going to kind of move in on our weekend here a little bit. Free flowing. Free flowing. Ad libbing. Making Absolutely. it up as you go. No script at all. Yeah. Uh, those were some golden, golden times. They were. I mean, no offense to the other stations in town, but I think hands down. We were the best. And yeah, okay, we can toot our own horn, but I think there's a lot of truth. You're retiring, you can toot your horn all you want, right? <laughs> he became a regular fill in on Good Morning America for years. He hosted the Seattle Children's Hospital Telethon. He wrote a book, hosted a golf tournament. He was on the board at the Museum of Flights and became the first African American member of the Seattle Golf Club. And along the way, Two times per show, three shows per day, 300 days per year for more than 40 years. He got himself pumped up and ready, and he turned it on. More than 80,000 times he went out onto that news set and lit it up as Como TV's Steve Poole. You don't get that good, you don't stay that good without a fire in the belly. And make no mistake, lovable, amiable Steve Poole had a fire in the belly. You know, my dad was in the service, and there was, a, you know, there's an ethos when you're in the service, and, you know, and it's like, I don't give a damn, take the hill. Take the hill. You know, and that's, that's not a bad thing, it just, it just is. So I was told from this big, uh, if you have something that you have to do and it's important, do it. Get it done. No excuses. <laughs> the journey, the career had so many highs, but there were lows too and they left their marks. As you know, uh, when Kathy passed away, um, it was a tremendous, uh, I still miss her. Yeah, everybody uh, does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we lost her, I, we didn't really change, but the, individually, but the, it wasn't quite the same ethos. Yeah. Right now. This is for you, Kathy. I love you. Somewhere along the journey, the man, That's the weatherman, it. the friend and co-worker passed over into a different arena, a place where introductions are unnecessary, where strangers accept him like family, where his celebrity was such that he somehow belonged to everyone. The weatherman became a Seattle icon. I'd say 99.9% .9 of the things that I was able to do here was so far, so hugely more than I ever dreamed in my wildest dream. Really, uh, to be able to do this business and to be able to be successful with it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Went after your prostate cancer. Prostate cancer took him off the air for a time. It's gone now, but it changed him left another mark but uh, you know it clarifies it clarifies what the heck is really important here you know and I've done so much for so many other people and I enjoyed it but I think geez I gotta take care of myself now and so a truly great career, which is a journey, reaches its natural conclusion. And a graceful, generous, decent man, a friend who's danced on the high wire in front of a green screen for more than 40 years, visits one more time and then exits so that he might write his second act so that the beautiful journey might continue. Wow, I haven't sat down here in a while.
Coming up, a familiar face returns to Como to share some special memories. Oh, yeah. those were fun times. Those are fun times, you know. You know, for 43 years, every single morning, it's been cloudy with a chance of Steve Poole's smile. So it was already a good, always going to be a good day. Congratulations, Steve. We'll carry on without you. Keep smiling, friend. Hey, Steve, it's David Muir here. And from all of us here at ABC's World News Tonight, I just wanted to say congratulations on your retirement from Como News. We celebrate you and your 40 plus years of forecast. You know, they talk about all that rain in Seattle, but you brought the sun, you brought the laughs, and you helped so many in need throughout the Northwest. We'll miss you, and if anyone deserves retirement, it's you. Congrats. When you think of Steve Poole and the illustrious career that Steve Poole has had, and all that he's given to all of us, it's impossible to sum it all up in, right now in such a short period of time. He's such a great personality, he's such a nice guy, and that came across. I mean, Steve was being Steve on TV and people just loved him. Well, let me ask you guys this. I mean, this is the, this is the how many years on this set, the, the two of you, and then I came a little bit later, but how's it feel to be back out here? Well, we were 27 uh, together, yeah. but this guy was here long before <laughs> I came here, and he's been here after I left, so oh, this, this is the guy who's, uh, who's put in the time. It's kind of frightening, though, because you know, it just goes and goes, and you don't really think about it. Everything is fine at the fair. We're getting along great down here, Dan, Kathy, back Yeah, just you. don't go get a bacon burger or anything like that. Do you? Oh, hey, oh this just a... Yeah, you <laughs> should never have brought that up. <laughs> I tried to calculate how many hours we were on the air, and oh. it was it was just, I mean, uh, hundreds of thousands of hours, and to me it was mind-boggling. Uh, we were really good. I thought we were really good that time. When, when that phase, when it was Kathy and you and me and Dan, uh, we just, we tore it up. We were clicking. It felt like we, we were clicked. clicking. Well, we, I, you know, the key to that, I think the big key to that was uh, not only, you know, can I say that I think we were really good at what we were doing, but we we were best friends. We we loved each other. We we trusted each other. Um, I knew that Kathy had me. I knew that when you came in, you were on a roll. I knew that w the weather, whether it was good or bad, you had it covered. You were keeping us informed about the weather. It, it was a great time. I gosh, I I think back on those times, and I just really feel blessed that I was a part of it. I think the, the, the other thing that was so precious to me is that we liked each other enough that when we left work, we wanted to do more. Yeah. We wanted to, you know, we wanted to rent an RV, <laughs> you know, and take a trip together. Take a we, trip together. You know, I, yeah. that doesn't tell you that. Boy, I don't know what else I can say. So let's talk about real quickly. <clears throat> apple cup. <laughs> because there were so many apple cups that I sat here and you sat there and Kathy sat here and I felt like I was the referee because yeah. I was not a husky or I was not a coog. You and Kathy tried to outdo each other with the mascots yep. and the and the music yep. and the bands. Yep. That was fun. Oh, yeah. those were fun times. Those are fun times, you know, getting the entire Husky band <laughs> to yes. walk through the... <laughs> well, it sounds so silly, but, you know, it was a bonding process for us. And I, I love the fact that we were able to do what we did as well as we did for as long as we did. That to me, and that doesn't happen very much in this business. Yeah. God, this guy is such a good friend and, and, and su such a great coworker. And I know how much you loved Como, and I know how much I loved Como. I know how much you gave to Como. I hope that you enjoy retirement as much as I do. Hey, I mean, what is it about Elvis that you like? Still to come, Steve's eye for young talent and his on-air appetite. You know, if one is fumbling around in the dictionary in the G section and looks for good guy or gentle soul, you'll find a picture of Steve Poole. Seattle has been lucky to have you, Steve, and so were we at Good Morning America.
the boy who would be king. Bruno, as in a young Bruno Mars. And how about an up-and-coming Sir Mix-a-Lot? How do you get started doing this? I mean, it, it's pretty hard work to get... Let me explain it to you, man. It's something like this. You get on KOMO and you take the mic from MC Steve Poole. It's my... All of a sudden, we had growth right after that. All of a sudden, Mix-a-Lot was not necessarily a household name, but I was starting to get there. That show was called Front Runners. Steve not only recognized raw talent... He has some serious musical chops himself. Look out, here come the champions. Everybody make some room. He even co-wrote and performed an anthem for the 12s after the Seahawks won the Super Bowl. Wherever he goes, Steve's personality pops. So mm -hmm. for oh, beauty. Steve is a huge he cupcake fan. <laughs> he does. All right, Steve, and try then, it. Well, 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 he made the four o'clock show so fun. <laughs> he brought an element of fun of um, humor, of you just didn't know what you were going to get to the 4 o'clock show. His favorite part was obviously eating the food. Anytime we had restaurants on the show, any, you know, desserts, cupcakes, rest, you name it. Steve was the first person to come out to the newsroom. It's like working with a good friend. Oh, man, that looks so good. <laughs> but this friend has a lot of experience. So when you show up at work, you know that he's always going to bring his A game. He is always going to be a true professional. And you don't have to worry about anything because Steve Poole is there. I think some of my best memories will always be hosting Seattle Children's specials with him. And Steve would give each person his attention. He'd take lots of pictures. He would talk to people and really engage and hear the stories that they wanted to share. And seeing him do that, giving his time to people who really were excited to meet him, just seeing how genuine he was with everyone was just always a real treat. I enjoyed seeing it and enjoyed seeing how much it made other people smile. Steve's unique. I mean, not only are there big shoes to fill, but He's got unique shoes. He's got Steve Poole shoes, and only Steve Poole can wear Steve Poole shoes. Coming up, Steve's thank you to the viewers of Western Washington. Steve was and is a master of connecting with the viewer. You always felt that when he's doing the weather, he's only speaking to you. I was really nervous when I came to interview at Como last fall, but meeting him, he really just put me at ease. It was so disarming, and he felt like a local celebrity to me because I grew up watching him. Steve is a genuine person, a great human being, and a wonderful person that I can now call one of my good friends. And to be on the same team as Steve, is just mind-blowing. First time I really understood the impact that Steve had on the community was on the 4th of July because Como used to help put on this big event down on the waterfront called the 4th of Julyvers and Steve went down there live and I went out to assist him and people came running in droves like they'd seen the Beatles. Steve has taught me to be a better weather forecaster, a better person because of Steve and who he is. I think Como will always be linked to Steve Poole and Steve DeComo. And now I want to say something to the viewers. Throughout my career and the high parts and the low parts, the main thing I wanted to do was get some information to you so that you could make choices about your lives, all of your families, all of that. That was my main imperative. But in that process, I just kind of fell in love with doing this because I could go out and folks would come up to me and, you know, if I missed it, they'd give me a little bit of a razzing. But on the other side, you know, if I did a great job, uh, they would support me. A lot of folks have asked me, what am I going to do next? At this point, I'm not really sure because I've never had the opportunity to just sit down and really digest all that I've done. Because in this business, things roll along pretty quickly. And uh, it, it's old news, it's bye-bye. But I do know this. I still want to be in the neighborhood I still want to continue my charity stuff. Uh, I'm very proud of that. And 
I want to make sure that at the end, my wife, Michelle, my daughter, Lindsay, and my, my daughter, Marissa, uh, I know they're proud of me, and I'm proud of them. But the reason why I did all this is not for myself. It was really come down to this wonderful place where we live and being able to live here and raise a family in a place like this. I've accomplished it, so I'm ready to go on to the next level. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will miss it. And in some ways, I wish I could just snap my finger and be right back down there trying to get the forecast right. Steve, I want to thank you for being such a wonderful friend and coworker. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve, for all you have done for Western Washington. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for everything.